Uh, thank you very much and welcome. So this is Luis Pavon from the Department of System Stability and Grid Integration of the Fraunhofer IEE in Kassel, Germany. And today I want to talk about the power factor improvement by active distribution networks during voltage emergency situations. This is a joint work between the Fraunhofer Institute and the University of Liège with the Professor Thierry van Kutzen, who is the other author of this publication. Our main motivation for this work is that up to date we have considerable amounts of distributed generating units integrated mainly into medium and low voltage grids and therefore the interaction between transmission and distribution networks is playing a higher role in power system security. Therefore, the contribution of active distribution networks to system stability is becoming more and more significant. In this work, we are focusing on long-term voltage stability issues, which lead us to a fundamental question, which is, what do we do with all these distributed generating units if there is a situation of a potential voltage collapse? But before I address this question, let me quickly introduce you to our test system, which as you can see, is a rather simple system, but at the same time, it is a very concept-friendly system, uh, which is used in literature to illustrate the long-term voltage instability phenomenon. It consists of a transmission side with a Thevenin equivalent and a synchronous generator equipped with AVR and over-excitation limiter. And this system provides power to a load center through a LTC equipped distribution transformer. On the distribution side, we have our distributed generating units and our load model, which is 70% an exponential load model. And 30% is a dynamic load representative of small residential and industrial uh, motors. Uh, before showing the details of our proposed controller, allow me to first say in a few words what the uh, classical long-term voltage instability mechanism is. So if we consider again our simple test system, we can depict what we call the load power space and the feasible region in the load power space. What this feasible region means is actually the power generation system can provide to the load center. In other words, this system can provide any power as long as it is inside the feasible region. In mathematical words, this means that there are no solutions to the load flow equations outside the feasible region. And in physical terms, this will mean that any attempt of providing power outside the feasible region will result in voltage instability. So here what we have in this case is our uh, pre-disturbance feasible region and our pre-disturbance operating point. And the question is what will happen with the feasible region if we have a system disturbance such as a line trip, for instance. So what will happen with the feasible region is that it will shrink as we can transport now less power. And as I said before, the operating point can never be outside the feasible region. So what happens in reality is that this operating point will move and it will oscillate and if all the short-term dynamics remain stable it will settle to what we call a short-term equilibrium this is something that we can also see here in the time domain simulations if we keep our attention in the active power for instance once the line trips the system oscillates and it settles to a short-term equilibrium nevertheless this operating point is not a long-term equilibrium which means that it will move depending on the long-term dynamics. So what happens in a classical scenario is that the LTC of the distribution transformer attempts to restore the distribution voltage. And in the process, it will also restore the load power consumption. In terms of the load power space, what it means is that this operating point will slowly move depending on the long-term dynamics. And if there is an attempt of going outside the new feasible region, the system will experience system instability, which is what we see here in this case. Mm, so this brings us to our big question. What do we do with distributed generating units in order to uh, avoid a potential uh, long-term voltage instability? So the answer that most power engineers will give is that if we are support, if we are experiencing voltage problems, it makes sense to support voltage by means of reactive power injection. And this makes sense because even if we consider the high resistive nature of the distribution grid, it makes sense to support reactive power just next to the load. So we don't need to transport huge amounts of reactive power from far away in the system. Uh, but as I will show in a second, this may not be the proper course of action. 
uh, what happens if we attempt to only inject reactive power with the DG units? Uh, the first and most obvious consequence is that we will decrease the reactive power that we are demanding from the transmission system. And this is a good thing. We are actually moving downwards in the load power space. But this has a counterproductive effect, which is that as long as soon as we start injecting reactive power with the DG units, we also increase the distribution voltage, which, which translates to increased power consumption. So the overall trajectory in the load power space is something like this, which is a trajectory that's had shown to be detrimental for system stability. Uh, here I, I put a couple of references that explain this phenomenon uh, in good detail. So if injecting reactive power was not the proper course of action, uh, what if we do the opposite? What if we actually decrease reactive power injection with the DG units? So the first effect will be that we will actually increase the reactive power that we are demanding from the transmission system. And this is not a good thing. We are moving upwards in the load power space. Nevertheless, this has an advantage and is that if we decrease reactive power injection, we decrease the distribution voltage, which translates in a decreased power consumption. So the overall trajectory in the load power space is something like this, which is a trajectory that has shown to be more beneficial than the previous one, but nevertheless, it also suggests that in some cases we could go outside of the feasible region. So this is the problem that we want to address with this work. We want to have proper support, reactive power support with the distributed generating units, meaning to improve uh, power factor without the counterproductive effects of load restoration. And therefore, we are proposing a voltage uh, emergency control scheme, which is depicted here as a, st a finite state machine representation. And what it does is that it improves power factor as seen by the transmission network during voltage emergency situation. But first, let's recall what will happen without the controller as soon as we inject reactive power with the DG units. So what will happen is that when we inject reactive power, we will increase the distribution voltage to dangerous levels. And this is not a good thing to happen. This will lead to load restoration and it will endanger system stability. Now, uh, when we activate our controller, what we are doing is actually synchronizing DGU actions with LTC actions. Uh, so we inject some reactive power until some point but then we synchronize with the LTC in order to slightly decrease the distribution voltage. This gives us a little bit of room for more reactive power injection, and then we synchronize with the LTC again. This gives us a little bit room for more reactive power injection, and then we synchronize with the LTC again, and so on. So as you can see, we can have a very good reactive power support with the DG units without the counterproductive effects of load restoration due to increase uh, distribution voltage. To show the performance of the controller, I brought to you three different cases. So the first one, or le let me call it uh, case zero, is the base case in which we have no emergency control. So what we see here is the distribution voltage and the reactive power injected by the distributed generating units. So here what happens is that the line trips, the system oscillates, settles to a short-term equilibrium. Here we can see the action of the overexcitation limiter of the synchronous generator. And we can also clearly see how the LTC of the distribution transformer starts restoring distribution voltage. What is important to note here is that there is no reactive power support by the distributed generating units. In the next case, we activate our voltage emergency controller with the following parameters. The voltage set point for the LTC is lower to 0 0.95 per unit, as well as the voltage set point of the distributed generating units equally decreased to 0 0.95 per unit. So what happens here is that once we activate our controller, we know that the normal operation dead band for the distribution voltage is not feasible anymore. And we know that if we attempt to restore distribution voltage, to this value, we may encounter system instability. So we lower our dead band, and what happens is that the distributed generating units increase reactive power, the, the distribution voltage enters the emergency operating dead band, and the, and the controller remains idle. What is important to note here is that the distributed generating units slightly improve their reactive power support. 
And I say slightly because with our controller, uh, we, can, we can do better than this and we can exploit more the characteristics of our controller as follows. So in this case, what we propose is to have a slightly higher value for the set point of the distributed generating units than the set point for the LTC. In other words, once we activate our controller, we will have two different dead bands. One dead band for the distributed generating units and another one for the LTC. What happens here is that the DG units, they inject reactive power, but as you can see here, they stop. They stop because the distribution voltage enters the DGU dead band and the controller remains idle in order to avoid distribution voltage uh, increase. And here the controller remains idle, waiting to be synchronized with an LTC action that slightly decreases the distribution voltage. When this happens, it gives us a little bit more room for some more reactive power injection. And if, and if we re-enter the DGU dead band, we remain idle again, and we wait for the next LTC action and so on. So as you can see here, we can have a highly uh, reactive power support from the distributed generating units without the counterproductive effects of distribution uh, voltage restoration. And here in this slide, we can see the controller's performance from a transmission point of view. So we have here the transmission voltage and the reactive and the power factor that the, that the transmission system sees. So as you can see here in case zero, we experience uh, system instability. In case one, we have a slight improvement of, pow of power factor, but uh, even though the improvement in power factor uh, is uh, kind of marginal, the controller achieves something very important, and it is that it stops the instability mechanism and the system remains stable. So now the system is long-term stable and transmission voltage settles above 0 0.9 per unit. But it's actually in case two where we can actually exploit the characteristics of the controller to highly improve power factor, which leads to a nice uh, voltage recovery settling to close to one per unit. So as you can imagine, the success of this controller highly depends on the ability of the distributed generating units to inject reactive power when requested. So what we see here in this plot is the capability curve of an inverter in terms of active and reactive current. And what we see here is the result for four different simulations in which the initial active current is different. So in the first case, for instance, the initial active current is 0 0.85 per unit. And what happens is that once the line trips, the system oscillates, and at point A, we activate our controller. The controller will request reactive power injection, which means that the inverter increases its reactive current. What we see at point B is actually the first uh, LTC action. So we see an LTC action, more reactive power injection, another LTC action, more reactive power injection, and so on. So all this increase in reactive current translates to an increase in reactive power, which we call here our reactive power margin. In this case, the reactive power margin is equal to 11% of the load reactive power consumption. If the initial active current is higher, as in these two cases, for instance, the reactive power will naturally, the reactive power margin will naturally be uh, lower as the inverter may hit its maximum current limit. So in these cases, we, we have a reactive power margin equal to 9% and 8% respectively. But what is interesting to see here is the, this last case in which the initial active current is so high that once the initial oscillations have died out, there is no room for any reactive power support whatsoever because the inverter reached its maximum current. Uh, and as you can see here in the time domain simulation, in this, uh, in this case, we can't really improve power factor. And this is a natural limitation of the controller. Nevertheless, even in this very conservative case, the controller achieves something very important and is that it stops the instability mechanism. The system remains uh, stable, is long-term stable and transmission voltage settles above 0 0.9 per unit. Uh, in the other cases, when we have some sort of reactive power margin, we can highly improve power factor, which leads to a nice uh, voltage restoration. To conclude the presentation, the interaction between transmission and distribution networks is playing a higher role in power system security. 
Therefore, we are proposing a controller that improves power factor as seen by the transmission system during voltage emergency situations. And we do this by synchronizing the actions of distributed generating units and the LTC of the distribution transformer. Uh, uh, therefore, the counterproductive effects of uh, distributed generating units on distribution voltage are avoided. And this scheme has been tested for different levels of DGU reactive power reserve, as well as for cases of low sensitivity of load power to voltage. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Luis, for keeping the time. Uh, there is large similarity with this and the previous paper, but this will require more long discussions that we cannot start now. Uh, so I will um, uh, go instead to the floor and um, read you the question by Stefan Stankovic. Thank you for a nice presentation. I have a question regarding how would the DSO determine that normal operating range is not feasible anymore and how is the new feasible operating range for voltage on the secondary side of the transformer identified and determined? Uh, so the first question on how the DSO would determine that is not feasible anymore. Uh, what happens is actually that we detect a potential voltage collapse. This is done by means of a, a instability detection method. It could be something as lives, for example, or by simply setting a threshold on the transmission uh, voltage. So it, what actually happens, what actually triggers the controller and the lower, uh, and the, what triggers the controller and the fact that we want to lower the set point is a simple instability detection method. Um, the second question, uh, what is feasible, uh, so which, which distribution voltage will be feasible or not? That's a little bit uh, difficult to answer in a, in a real time uh, environment. So once we have the emergency situation, we don't want to push also to the limits of what's feasible or not. So we go into an emergency state in which we, intentionally lower the voltage set point. We don't care so much what is feasible or what's not. We lower the voltage set point on the distribution side, still to a, let's say, to a acceptable value, which is 0 0.95 per unit, which is very similar to what is done in, in traditional measures, just as lower the voltage set points of the LTC. Thank you, Luis. Uh, another question by Antonio Gomez Esposito. Uh, if the LTC transformer is equipped with a fast automatic voltage regulation system, then we could forget about voltages at the head of the distribution system and focus mainly or even exclusively on the reactive power injection at the point of common coupling. Wouldn't it be simpler than implementing a centralized controller? What's your opinion, Luis? So our opinion is that most distribution uh, most distribution transformers, they have L uh, conventional LTCs. So this controller actually reuses the logic of conventional uh, low tap changer control. And we are reusing this logic, which makes it actually very easy to implement. Um, it, and regardless of what's the voltage control method, so regardless how the, the transformer is controlling voltage, what is important is that it is actually it, the distribution voltage needs to be lowered. So you're lowering the set point of the fast or slow acting LTC, right? Yes, because at the end, what will happen, what, what matters is the voltage magnitude that the, let's say, the load side will see. Okay, thank you. Uh, 